Australia's chances in the World Cup can be summed up in two words, Harry Kuhl. But with the big event less than four weeks away, no one's talking about Harry's deft footwork or his killer boot. You see, there's a big problem with our star player and it's down there. Harry's got a dodgy groin and he's struggling to be fit in time for the big one. So will he or won't he be ready? Well, for the last three months, I've had unprecedented access to the cool camp. And like all Aussie soccer fans, I've been feeling every niggling twinge. This is not how we want to see Australia's main strike weapon preparing for soccer's World Cup. OK, let's go. A few months out from the biggest sporting event there is, we're with Harry Kuehl in a Sydney operating theatre as he undergoes a procedure that will hopefully make, not break, his career. That's the tear, that is a mess. Look at that. Look at that. Harry's in fine hands here, but this groin surgery is delicate. There's no normal tissue there. And as you'll see, his recovery will be far from smooth. Yeah, that is very, very unusual. Harry Kuehl scores for Australia. This was meant to be a story about Harry Kuehl doing what Harry does best. Scoring goals for Australia. Do you get nervous at all when you come onto the pitch? No, I get more nervous doing interviews. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I do it here in front trembling? of... Come on, let's see the, the hand. Is it trembling? No, I'm a little bit cold, actually. <laughs> it's a little bit cold, but uh, no, here in front of... You can put me in front of tens of thousands of people on a pitch and I'm probably the most comfortable I am. Galatasaray and Istanbul have been home for Harry Kuhl since 2008, where he's been playing his best football in years. That all came to a grinding halt with this latest groin injury. How frustrating is it to be on the bench? And sometimes not even on the bench, just down. Yeah, <laughs> it's tough, but I've had plenty of experience with yeah. that lately. You have, haven't you, poor thing? I <laughs> know, oh, but you know what, it's... It comes with the territory. But with the countdown to World Cup now well and truly on, the pressure on 31-year-old Harry is immense. Thankfully, our most sought-after soccer star is still passionate about being a socceroo. I know what it takes to, to be the best, and, you know, and that's what I've got to try to achieve, because you just don't want it to end, and you know what? I, I don't want it to end. It started so well. Look, it's a cross, and it's a goal for Harry. The 15-year-old boy from Sydney's West who found football fame at Leeds United in England. Harry Kuehl breaks the deadlock for Leeds United. You all, all. His lethal left foot took him to Liverpool, but injury dogged much of his career there. And Harry Kuehl goes on. And so when Harry first came to Istanbul, many thought it was the beginning of the end. Obviously, as you can see, it's, it's a beautiful place to be. And, uh, a sunny, semi-retirement plan to earn some fast and easy cash. But at his apartment, the cool fridge shows what he's given up to make this move work. I'm Daddy's not here. Oh, no, Daddy's not there. What, what pyjamas you got on? They're new, aren't they? His wife, Cherie, who's an actress, and their three kids, Taylor, Ruby and little Matilda, still call England home. And how are you, Taylor? And so precious family time is made via the computer. Daddy! Yes, Matilda? I like our food. <laughs> you, you what? A food. <laughs> <laughs> oh. OK. That's OK, you have to do that. <laughs> There's no doubt living apart is hard for this young family. No, say bye-bye to Daddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. But they do get together when they can, and then it's very special. Bye-bye. I guess when you are apart for so long, every time you meet must feel like a honeymoon. Yeah, it is great, actually, when we do meet up. We, I went, before we came here, I went to Turkey for a few days um, on my own, no kids. And Harry romanced me. Oh, it was so nice. How did he do that? Oh, just, you, you know. You have to really say it's, it's a secret. It's a secret? Yes. OK, it was lovely. It's a cop out, Harry. <laughs> Come on. Don't want to give any secrets away. A bit of baklava. Oh, there was baklava <laughs> involved. <laughs> there was, actually. Yes. There was. 
but we can't blame the baklava for Harry's groin problem. At the elite level, soccer is tough on anybody, and nobody knows that better than Harry. Any allergies to any medications? No. He's had 14 previous operations, including on his troublesome left groin. Off to sleep now, Harry. Counting. One, two, three. <laughs> This procedure at the Sydney Private Hospital in late January is on his right side. He's had a little niggle there, but this was supposed to be more about ensuring he's perfect for the World Cup. That is most unusual. I just feel that that is really hard. Yeah. Yep. Surgeon Dr John Garvey and his team are the best in the world at this operation. Um, it's just a mess. At first, it doesn't sound great, but after about half an hour of surgery... Well done, that was good. Dr Garvey is very pleased with his work to, uh, and even makes a bold away. prediction. I think he could expect five years, five more seasons. The operation's all over. You're in the recovery ward now. From the moment he opens his eyes, there's only one thing Harry wants to know. When can he play football again? So he was really happy. Four weeks is the, is the plan of attack. So I think great. he said I can play to about 45 now, so <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. Don't know, if I'll, don't know if I'll last that long, personally. Since but, uh, you're only 21, that's a yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very long Who time. Who yeah. was 20? No, 21. <laughs> It's just a week after the operation. Harry's still in Sydney. Cherie's here with Matilda, and everyone's happy. Mm -hmm. yeah, you look good. Thank you. Thanks, Stop up well. well. You look amazing, Harry. Thank you. <laughs> Harry's working his other job as the face and body of fashion house politics. Obviously, I've seen all the shots, and he looks hot, but to actually see him here doing his stuff. I'm quite impressed. He's a proper model. He's a proper model. Do you think he's practised in the mirror? He must have done. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he's lurching up a little bit. Perfect there. Wicked. By far and away, the best news is that his groin is recovering well. Harry happily returns to Turkey, but walks straight into a major setback. When Harry came back to Istanbul after his operation, he was within days of being able to play. But his wound still needed a couple of stitches. Instead, the Turkish doctors at Galatasaray decided to staple Harry's groin. Their plan didn't work and Harry couldn't walk, let alone kick a football. Since then, it's been a remarkable and desperate race by Harry to get fit in time to play for Australia at the World Cup. I couldn't move, so that kind of threw everything out of whack and then five days pass, a week would pass, two weeks would pass, three, four. People go, what, what's happening? Still can't, still can't walk, still can't turn in bed. Harry's too much of a team player to blame the doctors here, but it's pretty clear the staples that were supposed to heal his groin wound back in February caused some kind of nerve damage. A doctor's a doctor and you, you trust them and he thought he did the right thing. I've worked with other doctors in my past where they've made decisions with me that have stuffed me up as well. But I won't hold them accountable. I know, but you're like a thoroughbred. You've got to be looked after. Yeah, you know what? Again, it's just part and parcel of football. You take the good with the bad. The bad means instead of playing with his club team Galatasaray by now, Harry's off training by himself. Yes, H, 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 H. Nice, well done. Go. His only companion is his Australian physio, David Pete, 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 nice. For him, it's not just a physical challenge, is it? It's also a psychological challenge. Yeah, he's been better than Bruce, and he's got to bounce off the ground every time, and you can only get kicked in the guts so many times, so it's tough. <laughs> It's repetitive hard work. If it goes over there, no chance. And while there's wild speculation back in Australia that Harry and his groin won't be ready for the World Cup, no one has seen these pictures. Do you ever give you a hard time? Oh yeah, he's a pain. 
Yeah, it can be a challenge sometimes, yes. Yeah, ask him why he's called Grumpy. Oh! <laughs> he's good now because it's 11.30 in the morning. All right, what time's he bad? 9 a.m. he's awful. <laughs> Considering what your injury has been, to do what you've been doing this morning, how far have you come in the last couple of months? It feels like I've climbed a mountain. It's from six weeks ago where I couldn't really even walk and to think about you know, other options in my, my career, to be able to step out here now and to hit a dead ball with my right foot is, as you say, it's an achievement for me, but I've still got a very long way to go. With his type of injury, don't underestimate how tough this is. You want to stand on the side, Tara? It gives him something to aim at. <laughs> well, I may as well be useful. <laughs> but the recovery is obvious. There's a lot of power in Harry's kick. I have to peel, I have to cut, I have to wash. I David and Harry make a formidable team and a mean meal as they try to outdo each other. Have you heard of clean as you go? <laughs> Exactly. Um, you know, his mess to my mess. <laughs> and even a simple dinner invitation for soup and salad turns into a MasterChef masterclass. Apple. Yeah, everything. I just like to throw everything in there. I'm disappointed that I didn't get an apricot, so the apricots didn't even register. Because you know what? That's just one of your special ingredients that no one else would ever put in a salad. <laughs> so how the hell would I ever remember putting apricots in? But you remember the almonds, I didn't put them in. What'd you get them for? <laughs> because I like almonds. Yeah, you like almonds. almonds. I didn't like nice. putting almonds in there. Ta-da! Well, all right. There you go. Dinner. All if right. soup and salad sound a little healthy, it's just part of getting Harry back on the pitch. When he's not playing, he's training. In the gym, in the pool, even just hanging around. And it's all about World Cup fever and being remembered for all his promise, not his injuries. You've been described as the Wizard of Oz, the player who brings fans to the edge of their seats. Are you someone who's realised their dreams or do you have enduring regrets? Um, I'd probably go with B, but that's the best thing about football. If you go out on the weekend and you score a goal or you make that decisive pass, you know what I mean? No one will talk about me ever being injured again if you win the World Cup. And it's Harry Kewell, the 19 year old. Harry concedes the Socceroos' chances of winning the World Cup are slim. Kewell, Kewell, the World Cup beckons. But he would never bet against us. Drop a Kewell! Harry Kewell has done it! And even better news for Australia, he believes he's got another World Cup in him after South Africa. I'm not going to rule it out. I love the game as much as I've ever loved the game before in my life, so the passion won't go away. It's whether my body can handle the, uh, the stress of going through another four years of, of playing football, which I personally think it can. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.